Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade, and in this tutorial, we'll be making our first simple buttons in 2.25. But before we jump over to the code, I wanna go over a basic design philosophy. One thing I wanna stress with all of the design stuff that I talk about in these series is that you don't necessarily have to buy into it 100%. You can believe some of it, not believe the rest of it, uh, but it's at least worth knowing, thinking about, and trying to figure out how much do you agree with it. So this comes from Max Kenna Alexander. He's got a couple books out there. One I highly recommend is Code Simplicity. You can also find some YouTube videos with him. I've linked to one that I like uh, related to this specific issue um, at the end uh, or down below. And these are two ideas that he brings up that I wanna focus on in this tutorial. The first one is that code should be designed based on what you know now, not on what you think will happen in the future, and that you shouldn't write code until you actually need it. He puts these ideas forward as rules to follow to keep your code simple, maintainable, and usable by yourself and others both now and in the future. And one thing you might realize pretty quickly if you think about this is that if you're going to follow this, it means that you're going to be redesigning your code a lot. Or maybe a better way to put it is that your code design is going to be iterative. And that's a philosophy we're going to follow in this particular project. So we want to create a very simple button. And a button can be defined as something that you interact with. And when you interact with it, it does something. So let's jump over to Game Maker Studio and make a button. All right, before we get started, let's go over some simple project setup here. All I've done so far is I've created one room and named it RM main, and then I've added two sprites, sprite background main, which I'm using as the background for this room. You can see right here. And then I added sprite button, which you can see here is just a square, uh, 100, 100, uh, pure white with a center origin. The room dimensions are 400 by 600, and we just have the two layers, instance and background. And that's really it for setup. Now let's make our first button. We're going to create an object and call it OBJ button. We're going to give it our button sprite. And now let's stop and think for a moment. What is the simplest way to create something that when we interact with it, it will do something? Well, first we have to define a means of interacting with it. Let's use the gesture event tap. So we go to gesture, choose tap, and here we go. First, let's name our event. We're going to call it interact object button. So let's just do interact button. Now we can come over here and we can see that tap is our interact. And we got to pick something for this button to do. Let's just have it show the message, hello world. Now we can put this button in our room. Okay, and let's run. Here's our project. We're gonna tap and we'll show the message, hello world, which I mistyped uh, slightly. Let's fix that over here. There we go. So now we have created our first very simple button. And I actually think that it's worth stopping for a moment to diagram out what we've done. I use draw.io for diagramming, which looks like this. Let's name it button diagram. Our button basically has two states. Currently, it waits for input. And after receiving input, it acts. Let's draw some connectors here and then add some text to diagram it out just a little bit more. And when it's finished doing whatever it's supposed to do, it goes back to waiting for input. So here we have a very simple state diagram of our button. And we'll come back to and expand on this as it becomes more complicated. But this button doesn't really do a whole lot. Now let's think about what would happen if we wanted to add some more buttons. The first thing we could do is we could just duplicate this object several times and then change what is in the tap of it. So let's say we made three more buttons. We would have to rename them, of course, and then we went into the tap event for each object and 
Uh, we simply had it show a different message. Let's try that. Let's call this, let's say, object goodbye. Let's rename this one object hello world. All right, and let's create one more button. Object, let's say, how are you? Now, we're gonna go into each of these objects. I'm gonna say, so this is how are you? Let's say, how are you? And for this one, Goodbye. Now we come over here, add each of these in, and run it. Now we've got, hello world, how are you? Goodbye. So it works. But this is not an optimal solution. The more buttons we make, the more we're gonna have to go in and edit. And more importantly, let's say we decided that we didn't want buttons to work with the tap gesture event. Let's say we wanted to change it to be something else. Well, we'd have to go and change it for all three buttons. If we had 100 buttons, we'd have to change it 100 times, and that's not good. So we can solve this problem with inheritance. Let's create a tap parent. So we'll say tap button parent. Come down here, its children will be those I generally put my parents at the top and now we want to have a tap event gesture tap say interact tap parent and we're gonna say event user zero and actually let's set this up so we have two columns at the same time so here we go we're gonna have the tap parent call user zero, and then we're gonna change all of these to event user zero. Let's do that right now. Change event, other user zero, and you can see we got tap user zero. Okay, so I've gone ahead and changed all three of these. So they each have the parent event, which is the gesture event and then their own user event. We can come over here and we can see that now this is event user zero for each of these and the tap parent will call this event user zero. So if we were to run it again, everything still works. But now more importantly, if we were to say, you know what, we don't want this to be the tap button or let's say we wanna have a different type. Let's duplicate this. Let's call this double tap button parent. And now we can change this to change event, gesture, double tap, and name it double tap. So as you can see, these are the same, but they use a different interact. And if we were to come over here and put all the children over here now, You'll see they're no longer children of tap button parent. We could run it again. Now, single taps don't work, but a double tap will. And we could easily switch any one of these parents to a different one. And now this would work with tap again. And now the thing you might notice is that we've got some buttons down here, but there's no way to refer to all of these with a single line of code like you might want to if you were going to activate or deactivate some buttons. And there's a simple way to solve that problem as well. We're gonna create one more parent. We're gonna say button parent. Drag it to the top. And we're gonna say that your children are the two tap buttons. So tap and double tap. And here we go. We can see their children. And now we have a basic structure that we can build on as we go forward. And let's take a moment to diagram this out as well. I'm gonna use some faux UML here. 
give me a moment to redesign this and make it look a little bit nicer here. So here we have our final inheritance structure. I'll try to make it look prettier at some point, but I think this will work for now. We have our button parent, then we have our tap button and our double tap button, both of which inherit from button parent, and then they each have their own children, and it doesn't really matter how these are ordered because the point is we can switch these around. And as soon as we switch these around, they inherit the interact event, but they keep their own user event zero. So in this tutorial, uh, we talked a little bit about designing, specifically that we should design what we currently need and that we shouldn't write code that we don't need. We then created a simple button. And when we thought about how we would expand that, we redesigned it to use inheritance first to separate out the input from the action that the button takes, and then to put all of the buttons into a sort of a button class that we could reference later on in code, which we will use in future tutorials. We also created some simple diagrams that we can refer to later on if we forget how our buttons are working. This will become more and more important as they get more complicated. Links to the book I referenced as well as the YouTube uh, video I referenced are down below. And there should also be a link to the GitHub repository for this project. And that's it. Thanks for watching.